Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm playing a solo mode for a recent Button Shy game. This is Converge, and disclaimer, I got a review copy of this. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my thoughts on the solo play in the game in general. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else, top 10 lists and things like that, over 50 of them. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and interviews, or join the conversation on our Discord. So Converge comes with several different 18 card sets, and the basic idea of the game is you've got these cards, you'll usually have three in your hand at a time, and generally you'll play one a turn, and you can play them either as a card in your faction, where you only care about their number and their card set, their skill set, in this case Alchemist, you can also play them as a shared goal between both players where they fight over this goal and it's worth this many points to the person who wins, whoever has, in this case, the lowest alchemist card in their faction. Or you can discard it to activate its discard ability, in this case, destroying a card in either faction. And that's consistent across the skill set. So all the alchemists have the same discard ability. All the archivists have the same ability. And each set that they sell comes with three different skill sets, six cards each, one through six value-wise. Then you can mix and match them if you like. But separately, they have this Aspects of Vision solo mode. And in the competitive game, you're playing cards of your faction, playing shared goals, messing with things with the discard powers. After you each play a card, you see who has more points, and whoever has more gets what's called the Artifact, which is just another card from the deck face down. And if you have the most points and already have the Artifact, then you win the game. So you're trying to sort of win two in a row. The solo mode in Aspects of Vision is a little bit different. You've got these five cards face down for sort of an automated opponent, and you're going to flip one each round, so it's only five rounds of gameplay. Then you're going to play two of your three cards, so twice as much as you play in the competitive game. But you're still trying to get the most points, including in an added element for the solo mode, you're trying to fulfill these solo goals that only you can do. They're worth a bunch of points if you can complete them after five rounds. And then additionally, the second you complete them, you get one of these cards, which you can use as a free kind of bonus play on your turns. But the Atoma has an advantage in the solo mode. First of all, the cards they flip are both a goal and a faction member for them, so they kind of get double use out of the cards. And secondly, in any round, if they score any points, not the most points, but any points, they get the artifact or they win. So you have to basically shut them out completely while also building up your score. And your goal score to officially win is based on the sets used in the game. In this one, I've got Archivist, Alchemist, and Mechanist, so that adds up to 12 points. All right, so I start with the artifact, and let's jump in and play Converge. So the first step of each round is to flip up the leftmost card for the opponent. So here they've got a six mechanic or mechanist, and the goal for highest mechanist, which currently means I can't possibly beat that because there is nothing higher than a six. And I get to play three of my cards. So I've got a one and a six alchemist and a six archivist with the highest archivist, highest alchemist, and lowest alchemist goals. And Alchemist's power is burn. You can discard a card from either faction, so I can just blast that card to smithereens. And then Archivist's power is educate. Move one goal card to either faction. And these count as both faction cards and goal cards, so I could just straight up steal that from my side, which is what I'm leaning toward doing. But before I decide whether that's my play, let's see what we need to do to get these. Two of each skill set. Again, that's Archivist, Mechanist, Alchemist. So we can't get that until we have at least six cards. More of each skill set than your opponent. Those should go together pretty easily, as long as I keep them from getting a pair. Oh, geez, and then four cards of one skill set. <laughs> this is unusual. All of these kind of relate to the same thing. So I just want to have a ton of cards in my faction, which should naturally kind of lead toward me doing pretty well. Yes, yeah, so that being the case, I don't really want to blow up the Mechanist. So I'm going to discard this for its Educate Power. Say hello, you're on my side now. And then uh, let's get a little bit of diversity in my cards. I'll play this down into my faction. So again, your options are play into faction, play as a goal that either of you can achieve, or discard for its power. So I am getting a second faction card. And then you get two more cards. So you'll always have three for the next round. And finally, we check how people are scoring. So currently, I'm scoring zero points. So they're scoring zero points. Nobody takes the artifact. We're good to go. Okay, we flip with our next card, which is a four and most consecutive ranks in one skill set. So right now, the best we all have is one in each skill set represented. So neither of us is winning that. And in the solo mode, when you fulfill a goal equally, neither of you scores points, which means that the AI won't steal the artifact or automatically win or whatever. But hey, you know what? I do have actually some consecutive cards in a skill set. What if I do boom and then boom, that would get me three mechanists. 
Um, remember, I need four in one skill set for one of those goals. And it would get me four, five, six within one skill set, which means I am fulfilling that. So suddenly I have one point. I think that seems like a, a decent play here. So again, only in the solo mode, this person is both a four archivist, but also a goal for most consecutive ranks in one skill set. Currently, I am winning that with my four, five, six mechanics. So I've got one point. They've got none. We don't lose the game or uh, lose the artifacts. And we keep going. Okay, next. God, so many archivists. Uh, three cards with the consecutive ranks. But whenever you flip up a card that has a two, which represent kind of tough ones for the AI to actually achieve, they'll swap it with the top card from the discard, even if that also is a two victory point goal. Which means in this case, they've got that six archivist that I discarded before, which is annoying uh, because that's also the highest archivist. They would definitely win that goal. So I'll go to use uh, for my first play. I'll use educate again, steal it for myself. That discards that. And then what I want to have a two of each faction. So let's get another alchemist down. Uh, maybe the two just to have a lower number with all these high numbers. Okay, it's still the only goal is most consecutive ranks in one skill set. I should get more goals, by the way, because even if I get all of the uh, <laughs> the solo goals, that's only nine victory points. So that's supposed to have 12 to win. We only got two more uh, rounds to do that. All right, next is, oh, it's swapping. So this is most consecutive ranks, which they have four, five. I have four, five. Okay, so that's great. I want to leave that card because right now I am winning that goal as well. Although leaving them with two archivist means have more of each skill set than your opponent might not be possible. So yeah, we'll try to steal one. Although the stealing action is all an archivist and they have pretty much all of them. Now what I do want to do is I'm going to play this mechanist. Boom. Uh, because that's now four mechanists, which means I immediately check after any action you do this. I have four cards of one skill set. It's going to be three three points later. And now I get access to this card. Move up to two goal or faction cards to the goal area. Okay, that's cool. Ooh, actually, what I could do is use this to move both of their archivists to the goal area. These would still be active, which would still get me the victory points they're getting, but then they would have no archivists and I would have one, which uh, would mean that I do have more of each skill set than my opponent. I would get this bonus as well. Uh, sure, let's do that. So I'll use this to take an action. And these are just becoming regular generic goals, which I'm still winning. And I immediately see that I have more of each skill set than your opponent. Although I think I still need to have it at the end of the game to actually score the three points. But for the moment, I immediately get this. Take the artifact, discard any goal or faction card. Well, that is certainly not useful yet, so I'm not going to use that. What I do want to do for my second play is get some victory points out. Highest number of different skill sets, sure. That's a nice easy one. I've got three different skill sets and they've got uh, <laughs> they've got zero. So I should win that no matter what, since they're only getting one more card. And I still want to get, if possible, one more Archivist played for the last solo goal that I haven't gotten. But I've drawn the last cards and mechan ah, no Archivist. OK, so I'm not going to get those final three points. Crud. OK, this one is most Mechanist, which is fine. They're not hurting me in any way. And I still have more of each skill set than they do. So that's one, two, three, four victory points, plus the two of these that I've gotten. So that's six more, 10. I got to get two more points. Uh, I haven't really paid attention. Ooh, three cards with even ranks. Play that for our first play. I've got that easily. Six, four, six, two, more than enough. And then, hey, let's, uh, let's go one more. I can't imagine I wouldn't win any of these. Highest alchemist, yes. Most cards of the same rank, yes. All right, whatever. I'll go to do that one. All right, and we'll see how the goals went. So most mechanists, they have one. We have four. So we get one point for that. Most consecutive ranks in one skill set, six, five, four, two points. Most consecutive ranks in general, six, five, four, three points. Highest number of different skill sets. We have all of them, four points. Three cards with even ranks, absolutely, uh, six points. Most cards with the same rank. We have two ones and two sixes, either one, seven points. More of each skill set than your opponent. One mechanist versus four. Then we have all the rest. So that's uh, 10 points. And four cards of one skill set with mechanist. 13 points. And no, we never had two of each skill set. Oh, you know, I didn't even look. I could have, for one of my actions, discarded a card to use this. Move any goal or faction card to either faction. Well, I guess I could have, like, stolen one of the archivists to do that. Then I could have gotten the three victory points. Sure, there might have been a way to score higher. But either way, often I don't get to the score threshold here. So things uh, worked out pretty well. There we go. So with that being played, uh, Converge is a quick one. Let's talk about my impressions of the game. So first, let me address the competitive game. Because I've been playing this one a lot with my eight-year-old specifically. And I think it's a ton of fun for a light, quick, little button-shy thing. You know, you have your three cards. They have theirs. 
and you're playing cards and then you're trying to get goals. It'll help you and hurt them, but then they can steal your cards and mess with the goals. And it's very, very fast. You each play a single card. You see how the goals shake up. One of you might steal the artifact from the other and you rinse and repeat. The entire game takes like five minutes, but it's been tense every time we play. There have been uh, chances for fun combos and clever plays. I like it a lot. So I think the competitive game is fun. If you're into these like little 1v1 quick experiences with some fun card play, this one is not a bad one to do, and I can imagine it'll only get better with different sets. Now, as for the official solo mode from the expansion, eh, it's fine. <laughs> you know, it's there. It reminds me of uh, some other... You know, like the Battle Crest official solo mode, I thought was a little weird in how they kind of changed up the game. Uh, the Skulls of said like solo mode. That one was actually pretty good. Just kind of thinking through some of the button shy solo modes I have uh, played. This one's okay. You can see that it still plays quickly. There's still clever choices. I will say, I feel like I have a twisted opinion of this solo mode because having the Alchemist and the Archivist. Okay, the alchemists just blast a person out of existence and the archivists steal a goal into your faction area. And so especially the archivists, but a little bit the alchemists, make it feel like I'm sort of, I don't know, avoiding playing the enemy where they live. Because <laughs> like they're only getting five cards the entire game, those five you flip up. So if I'm like just stealing them since they count as golds and people so the archivists can target them or just blasting them, I find that generally they don't really have any cards like you saw in this game. Which seems like it's not as interesting. You know, it seems like if they had a bunch of cards and you had a bunch of different cards and you were trying to like kind of scheme to get your cards ahead of theirs, that would be more fun. And at least from what I've been able to glean from like trying to look at the tiny text here, because they only sent me this one set. I feel like these sets here might be more interesting and might be more tactically engaging. So I feel like, I don't know, maybe this is like the worst set to play solo because it's too straightforward. It's too kind of obvious what to do, just blasting them and stealing their stuff. But that being said, that's all I have experience with. So that's all I can speak to. And yeah, it feels like the solo mode is fine. It lacks the tension of the competitive game. It lacks the, obviously, the fog of war of the competitive game to a great extent. It seems like the options are pretty obvious. But I do like the variety of these goals. I like that you get a power for grabbing them, but you also have the option to discard a card, which I forgot to do at the end of my game, to use one of the power cards, if you don't mind never going for that goal again. I do think that adds some to the tactical landscape. So it's one of those solo modes that's totally fine. You know, would I recommend going after it? Uh, no, not unless you really like the game and just want to have more chance to play it. But uh, honestly, I wouldn't strongly recommend Converge based on what I've played unless you're going to get competitive. That's like where the fun of the game is for me. The solo mode is a nice add-on. I can also see it probably wouldn't be that hard to develop like some kind of solo mode that tries to more model the competitive game a bit. I have some ideas of how to do it, but I don't know if I'm going to put the time into it because I already like playing the game two player and so does my son. But yeah, long story short, it's a fun game. Not sure it's the best for solo. That's not what I would say is the game's selling point. But also, I feel like if I had a different set than what they sent me, maybe the solo would be 10 times as fun. I really can't tell. It just seems a little bit too obvious with this particular set of three skill sets. So we'll see if I ever uh, buy some more and try out more if that kind of improves the experience. And at the end of some videos, we like to thank our co-op champions, our biggest supporters on Patreon. So I'd like to give a shout out to Minkus, J. Willie MF, and Steve Wren. Thanks, patrons, and thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you at the next stop.